Hello traders out there in trader land. My name is Des Woodruff, your future mentor and senior analyst here at Grok Trade and this is the weekend edition. This video is good through Sunday, August 14, 2011. And we've got a lot of charts to go through, so let's get after it. Here on the daily S&P, huge symmetrical triangle. Big breakdown, huge, monstrous breakdown, and one of the most volatile weeks we've seen in a long time. We have some four and 500 point move days here. Red, white, red, white, and then I did expect this. I shared this in yesterday's video, well, yesterday, it's the weekend edition, Thursday's video. We did make a higher high, higher low, but where is the big candlestick that I was expecting? I was expecting something a little larger. I was expecting the shorts to be covering positions. I didn't see that. That worries me on saying that we're, I don't know if we're going to get much of a pullback here for me to be able to load up on the short side. So that's something we need to be watching pretty closely. We do have a crossover taking place. We are heading north. We do have positive ticks on the histogram. So that is positive. Again, a little mini-me bounce. I mean, it was a 125-point day on the Dow, but compared to the other things, not too impressive. And we did have retail sales come out, and it did beat expectations up 0.5%. Now, if I look here at a weekly chart, a couple things I want to show you here. We had this big rising wedge, bad, 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 and also a symmetrical triangle, and then crash. The weekly chart is broken. We do have a head and shoulder, shoulder, head and shoulder trend reversal pattern. We did break the neckline. We broke major support, more support, more support, and we cracked through a whole slew of some important moving averages that I'm watching. The gold one is the 260 simple moving average. We broke it. The purple one here is, I don't know if you can see this over here, if I move it over, is my 67 simple moving average. I only do this on my weekly chart, so you're getting the goods here. The orange is my 225 simple. We broke all of those, and then the 200. Broke, 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 broke. But for the week, we come back up, we get a hammer, so now we have this nice pullback, and now we have a hammer. With the hammer, if we go higher, that would be a good thing. If we get past 1,200, 1,200. If we can get past 1,200, gang, I'm expecting another week or two of some sort of upward movement. Now, the 50% Fibonacci retracement put us about 1,230. 1,230 would be a good logical place to get a reversal and drop. So this could actually happen in one week. Another area, I wouldn't want to see it get any higher than 1,260. Anything higher than 1,260 would not make for a great short opportunity to the downside. So if we can stay lower than that and then reverse and then start heading down, licking my chops on that. But far as the CCI is concerned, we are really quite oversold right now in this market. Now, we're going to go over here to a monthly chart. Monthly chart for the month. The month isn't over with yet, so anything can happen, of course. If it does not rally back above this line up here, and I think I was telling you guys not too long ago around 1260, it needs to get above 1260. If it doesn't do that by the end of August, this chart is broken on the monthly chart. So stick a fork in the markets. We're in trouble. Doesn't matter what your opinion is. Doesn't matter what you think might happen. The charts speak for themselves. I called this in 2007, 2008, when the charts broke down. I said we were in massive trouble. And I was sh sharing my concern in this triangle, saying if we did break down, we are in significant trouble in the markets. You can't ignore that. To ignore that is like sticking your head in the sand and assuming all will be all right. I'm telling you right now, it all is not all right in the markets. I wish I could come and say and blow sunshine and say everything's fine. But I'm telling you, I we've seen this in 2000, we've seen it again in 2007 going in 2008. And we're knocking at the door yet again right now with some very ominous movements in the market. 
on the Dow. This is the Dow. The Dow drop on the daily. We're popping. It looks about par. What's going on in the S&P? If I go here to the weekly, we drop, 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 hammer. I'm expecting a bounce. The, we have some support here on moving averages here on the weekly on the Dow. Now, when it comes to the monthly, we are broken. We need to get above 12,000 for us to, to, for it to heal itself before the month's in. All right. I don't see that happening. Doesn't mean it can't. I don't see that happening. If it doesn't happen, the monthly chart is broken. This is the first time since 2009 that we have broken a major support line. And that tells us that this trend that we've been in going higher is now over. We are rolling over. We have the stochastics showing us a big bearish divergence. And it is dropping at this moment. Now, if I go here to the NASDAQ. I'm going to go to the daily on the NASDAQ. It, we drop, 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 drop. We have what looks to be a little mini me bear pullback with a doji, like it's ready to crash already. And that's not good. I'd like to see it get up higher, maybe challenge this 2600 area, and then be looking to go short. But we are seeing some significant weakness here. On the weekly chart, broken, but check this out. It's a green hammer, which is more bullish than what we're seeing on the Dow and the S&P. Now, if we pop, we still got to get past this 67, all right? You can see 67, support, 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 or resistance now. We got to get past that area. But if it gets up here around 2600, I can see it reversing, heading down. We're way over oversold here on the CCI, but we do have a little uptick taking place. Now on the monthly, we're broken, broken, broken if we do not get back over the trend line. And I'm going to say we need to get out over 2685. 2685 before August is over. I mean, mark my words on this. Write down these numbers. If we do not get over that, the chart is broken and expects um, significant downside uh, movements going into the future. Here's the Russell. The Russell looks a lot like the S&P and Dow and the rest of them. So if we go here to the weekly, here we don't have a green candle, but we don't have a red one. But we still have a hammer type formation with some moving averages acting as support. So we have this doji bouncing area about the 695 area, which was to be expected, not too shabby. See us run up, 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 up. As long as we can stay under 750, I think we will be, that would make for a juicy short if we get up there before we start heading down. The CCI uptick, so it wouldn't surprise me to get a bounce. Now, on the monthly chart, this one doesn't have to come back quite as far as some of these others. So if the Russells, the small caps, can rally back, get above, I'll say 7, I'd say 750. 750 before, before the month's over. If you can't do that, this chart is broken for small caps. Woe to the markets at that time. Now, I'm going to go here to the banks. The banks are really, really, really important. Look at the significant drop on the daily chart here. Look, instead of this little low base with a flat bottom, we're dipping lower here on the financials. The bank, NASDAQ bank index has over 470 banks. It's the largest index of banks out there. That's why I track this. That's not looking great. If you look here on a weekly chart, there's no hammer there. This is just one significant breakdown to the downside. Significant. Look at that. It is a free fall. Go to the monthly, big triangle. This triangle is called a symmetrical triangle, or you could even go bare pennant, as where it came from, breakdown to the downside. Woe to the markets. Gang, this is, I'm giving you a heads up here. We are in significant trouble out there in the markets. Let me show you something else that's um, pretty cool. I like Finviz. Finviz, just go to groups. When you go to Finviz, just click on groups. Great little site here. For the week, look at this massive red bar. Remember, I've been telling you on the weekend, week, the weekend edition charts, uh, that, or what, um, videos that, I, I watched these financials like a hawk. We did not need to see that right there. We are a little green in conglomerate and some reds, 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 reds. Boom! Financials down 2.5% for the week. Go here for the month. Financials down 12% for the month. You can see that 
it's starting to pick up ahead of steam. For three months, financials near the bottom, 7.5% six months. Financials at the very bottom, down 21%. The markets are only as strong as the financials. And the financials for the week, boom, big drop. Another thing, a story that I'm um, reading right now, if you want to know what I'm reading, I'm here at 247wallstreet.com. You can see that right there. This is an article written on July 29th, okay, 2011. This is before the markets just started crashing. And they said, uh, 10 signs that the double dip recession has begun. Woe to us, gang. Neat, neat uh, article here. And and let me show you something. It shows you here are the 10 signs. We have, uh, let me, I don't know, move that or get rid of it or something. Inflation, investments have begun to yield less. No, they are crashing and burning. The auto industry, oil prices, federal judgment, it gives you some great statistics here. So there you have it. You get the very best here of technical analysis. Share this with your buddies and friends. Furthermore, Furthermore, know that capital preservation is key. Please, I'm telling you here, you can hear it in my voice, I care. Make sure you safeguard your capital. Take the time to call your broker, move it into something safe. Don't assume that this is the bottom and everything's going to get rosy and, and go sky high. Maybe it will. You can always jump back in. What you can't do is make up the money that you lost on something that falls off a cliff. Are you hearing me? This is very important. So safeguard yourself. If you're part of the Grok graduates, you, you as students, congratulations on the volatility and the money that you've been making in the markets. To all those who are not students, not yet, it's just a matter of time before you make the decision. You'll come to a fork in the road saying, am I going to get formalized trading education or am I going to just hang out this very expensive hobby? Because after all, market tuition is quite expensive. So with that said, take the baby step, get some education. I'll put a little slide at the end of this video that will give you a discount on the 201 courses. They're pretty advanced. There are over six hours, five courses. Thank you all. Enjoy them. Take care. Safe trading.